want to welcome you to our worship service this morning. It's good to have you all here. Pat, can you hear me okay on the speaker? Okay, good, good. Hey, and we want to welcome folks who are streaming uh, live on Facebook, and uh, we're going to record this and post it later on YouTube, so you can watch it a second time if you want for extra, extra credit. So uh, this is a beautiful morning. I, I said to Dale Milligan uh, and, and to... Uh, 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 to Susan, we've got three or four crocuses poking their head out in the front yard, so that is wonderful. Uh, today is uh, also, today is Lucy Brooks' birthday, so Lucy, we send our hello to you and blessings to you on your birthday. Uh, the deacons, or rather the Christian Education Committee, next Sunday are going to be promoting uh, the blanket offering, and that is... Um, a program that's offered by Church World Service that provides very basic tools that can help people change their lives. Not only blankets, but also uh, fishing nets so that people can produce their own food, garden tools, ba very basic tools so people can improve their lives, feed their families, and that love changes the world. So thank you for sharing a gift next Sunday for the blanket offering. Our call to worship today comes from Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Christ died for our trespasses, but was raised for our justification. Thanks be to God. Our opening hymn, Jenny's going to sing it for us, here in this place.
Hear now our call to confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sins to God. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future in which we can be changed, and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue to offer our confession in silence. Amen. Hear the good news. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. May the God of mercy who forgives you all your sins strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Glory be to the Father and to the Please join me now in our prayer for illumination. O oh God, give us ears to hear your word, minds to understand it, and faith to live it. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Psalm 84, verses 1 through 4. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord of hosts. My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you are really, really fortunate, in our county in these days of warming sunny skies like we're blessed to have this morning, you'll get a chance to see them. Now I'm talking about the sand hill cranes. I saw a V-shaped formation of them flying high in blue skies on Thursday. They're flying from their winter habitat along the Gulf of Mexico up to their summer habitat around the Great Lakes. I thought about the journey they were making and the journey the church invites us to make during Lent. Like sandhill cranes, the time, this time, invites us to come home, to return to ways that deeply connect us to God, to migrate toward our home territory where we will find everything we need to live. The sandhill cranes have a variety of routes they can take. Some fly a north-south route that takes them far to the east. They fly over Knoxville and parts of eastern Ohio and they end up around Toledo. Some fly a north-south route that takes them far to the west. They start out flying over Albany, Georgia and, and over Terre Haute and Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And some, well, they take a route that fly directly over us. So too, we have many different routes that help us find our way more deeply into the life of God. Traditionally, Lent is a time to give up something or take on something. Some grow deeper in faith through study. Others take another route by being a blessing to others. There are many other routes too, like prayer, fasting, and repentance. Who do you want to be when Easter arrives? What kind of change would you like to see in who you are? 
What bad habit do you need to let go of? And what good habit do you need to take up? Now is the time to embrace the blessing that God wants to give you. God stands ready to help you make whatever change it is you need to make. Not so that you can earn your way to heaven. No. Heaven's way already has you. We are saved by grace. But how can you grow in that grace? How can you more fully become who God created you to be? These are the good questions that can guide us to be happier, holier, and more whole. A lay person in my home church who was a commercial airline pilot gave a sermon once in which he said, when I am flying 99% of the time, I am off course. Faith is like that, he said. The goal isn't to be perfect, but to keep adjusting what we're doing and who we're becoming so that we're a little more on course. Continuous small corrections are key to piloting a plane and to living your life in right relationship with God. What small continuous course corrections could make a huge difference in your life? Maybe it's giving up smoking or getting more rest or just being a better spouse to your partner or just slowing down so you can breathe. These are some of the grace-filled routes in which God invites us to go and grow. Not so that you turn into super Christian, but so you can just be healthier, happier, and more loving, which can and will change the world. We've been in this pandemic now for a year, a year that's brought economic upheaval, social unrest, and political division. We're stressed, we're exhausted, we're in need of a huge break. What if Lent is just the break we need? A time to breathe and receive what God longs to give us. How is God longing to bless you? What is God offering you right now that will feed your soul and change your life? Happiness, Psalm 84 says, is what happens when we find ourselves holy in God when we have made ourselves more at home in the goodness of God, is offering. What is your way into that blessing? What route is inviting you and beckoning you to enter? Find it. Live it. As you do, grace will abound. Happiness will be yours. And you will be home. Let us pray. Holy, gracious, and loving God, we give you thanks this day for this glorious day. We give you thanks, Lord, for the sun and for blue skies and for the greening of your world that is awakening to spring that we've been waiting for for so long. We pray, Lord, that as you awaken your world that you will so to awaken us, that you will enliven our soul and that you will give us eyes to see your miracles around us and your grace around us as well. We come, O Lord, to pray for your world, our nation, our community, and people in need. We continue to pray, Lord, that you will lead us out of this pandemic. Bless all who serve to protect us. Keep them safe. And Lord, we would ask that you would Help us all to continue to share this vaccine so not just the fortunate few get it, but that all receive this blessing and miracle. We ask, Lord, as well, that you would be with those who are in need of healing, remembering especially this morning Deb Cedars. We ask, Lord, that you to help the doctors get an accurate understanding of what's going on And so they may apply their best skills and their most effective treatments so that he uh, may recover speedily and fully. We pray as well for Noreen and for Noreen's friend Patricia. Bless Debbie, Jim, and Becky. Be with Susan's friend Jan. Bless Roger and help him remain cancer-free and COVID-free. Be with Betty and Dick and all who love them. 
We ask your blessings upon Paul that you would help him to fight off this blood infection and that you would help him to receive the heart surgery that he needs. Be with Sheridan's friend David. Bless him. Be with him. Bless Carrie, Marty, and Stephanie. Be with Bill and Linda. Bless Peg. And Lord, we pray for Barb's vision to continue to return. We ask your grace upon all who are grieving. We remember a special Crystal Plemons and her family as they grieve the death of her father, Bobby. Be with her and them and all of Bobby's loved ones and shelter them in your grace and your healing care. As well, we pray your blessings for Mandy, for Kyle, Brittany, Jim, and Rob, for the families of Helen and Arlene and Betty, and for Don and Dottie, and for Carrie, Marty, and Stephanie. Bless Kevin and Laura. Be with Susan's mother, Patricia, who's she's 94. She's been diagnosed with cancer. She's opted not to have surgery. We ask, Lord, that you would walk with her and that you would accompany her every day, now and forevermore. We ask your blessings upon the ministries beyond our congregation house and our facility for the Fish Clothing Pantry, the Montessori School, Child and Family Counseling, and the recovery meetings. We ask, O oh God, that you would pour out your grace and that you would work through these activities to clothe, to educate, to heal, and to uh, maintain a sober and clean and living life. We ask your richest blessings. Lord, we also pray for Hillary's grandfather, Lloyd, asking you to protect him. And Lord, we would also pour out to you these, our silent prayers. O oh God, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
now the charge and the benediction. I heard a Nashville, Tennessee rabbi say in a lecture one time that when we all get to heaven, God's going to ask us two questions. Number one, what did you do to help your brothers and sisters who are my children? And the second one is, did you have any fun? Lent summons us to grow so that we can say, not only then, but every day, an emphatic yes to both those questions. Let us go forth and live that yes with hope, with faith, and with love. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen.